The decisions that you make today are going to affect the rest of your life. And that's why it is so important in whatever you do to try to make the best possible decision. In this video, I'm going to try to help you make that decision. I'm going to help you learn. I'm going to give you the top study habits of the top 1% of students that I have seen in over a decade of teaching. I'm the Math Sorcerer and this is my YouTube channel. If you are not a subscriber, consider subscribing today. Setting clear goals is something that the top 1% of learners always do. You want to have a clear defined path for your learning experience. Top 1% learners set manageable goals. You don't want to say, hey, I want to learn all of calculus in a week. That's a great goal and it's a lofty goal, but it's probably not a goal that you can accomplish. So it's important to set manageable goals, small baby steps. If you're not sure what a reasonable goal is, just look at society. Let society be your guide. In our society today, let's use the United States of America as an example. Most college courses last 15 weeks to 18 weeks. So you can expect to learn the material in a college course on your own in that time frame or shorter. Take in mind that college courses usually only meet two to three days a week. So if you study harder, if you study smarter, if you follow the tips in this video, you can actually learn on your own faster than you would taking a college level course. And I don't want to make it sound easy. It is not. Learning is a challenge, but it's an easy way to set realistic goals. You can fall back on society and see what society says and set your goal that way. Prioritize your learning experience. This is one that blew me away when I first learned about this. Long ago, I was sitting in a college classroom in a technical writing class. The teacher's name was Brian. He was really cool. He was an ex-club DJ, and he told us that not everyone prioritized learning. He said, for a lot of people, school is not the priority. And I was blown away. I could not believe that there were students in my classroom who didn't prioritize learning. It was a life-changing moment. That's when I realized that a big part of my success was due to the fact that I was prioritizing my studies. And that's what other people who do really well do. They prioritize their studies. So if you are trying to learn something, make it a priority and it's gonna go a lot easier. I want to emphasize that prioritization of learning requires sacrifice. It is very easy to look at your life and say, oh, I just don't have the time to do that. That is what 99.99% .99 of people do. Your life is not going to change unless you do something different. If you are trying to learn something, Make it a priority. Active learning is extremely important and it is something that all top 1% of learners do. By active learning, I mean instead of just reading a math book, which I think is a great idea, or instead of just watching a math video, which I also think is a great idea, you want to sit down and take notes as you read the book. You want to sit down and take notes as you watch the video. Another way to incorporate active learning into your learning journey is to teach others. That's right. You learn through teaching. One of the reasons teachers know so much is because they always explain the same thing over and over again. You become a master at teaching calculus when you teach calculus because you're always explaining the same thing and you learn through that explanation, right? You get a deeper understanding of the material through teaching. You can also apply the knowledge that you learn. For example, if you're learning a new language, for example, Spanish, you can talk to people in Spanish, a direct application of what you're trying to learn. Regular review is a very powerful learning technique. By regular review, I mean you want to sit down maybe every other day or so and just go over material that you already know. You're basically reviewing what you know, and this keeps you fresh. This is especially important if a prolonged period of time has passed. For example, let's say you're a student in college and you're taking a higher level math class and maybe you forgot some of that basic calculus. You wanna go back and you wanna jump into those old calculus books and start doing some regular review. You're gonna find that it really benefits you even with the new material that you're learning because at least for mathematics, the more math that you know, 
the easier it becomes to learn new mathematics. Seek help when needed. That's right. It's important not to be afraid to seek help. If you're in a college environment, it's very easy to seek help. There's tons of resources. There's tutoring centers. You have colleagues, your friends, your teachers. But if you're learning on your own on the internet, it's a little bit harder. But we have YouTube. There's courses you can buy. So there's all kinds of resources. And you want to use them to learn as much as possible. People in the top 1% use all of their resources. That's why they're in the top 1%. Healthy lifestyle choices. This is one that is going to have a huge impact on your performance. You want to make sure that you sleep enough hours every night. You want to make sure that you're eating enough food and you're eating healthy choices. You want to make sure that you go outside and you get some exercise. Take care of your body and the mind will follow. Persistence and resilience. This is what really separates the top 1% from everyone else, I think. Those top students, those people who are always doing incredible and they're able to learn so quickly, they don't give up. They have failure, but they get back up and they try again. It is so important to have persistence and resilience. People who have managed to learn a lot of material in any given subject have had tons of failure and they've just gotten better at dealing with that failure. They know how to accept that failure and learn from that failure so that they don't make the same mistakes again. It's really important not to give up on your dreams, whatever it is you're trying to learn. Find your motivation for learning. This is extremely important, and this is going to vary from individual to individual. Your motivation for learning might be different than someone else's motivation for learning. For example, if you're trying to learn a new language because you want to visit another country, there's your motivation. If you're trying to learn to program because you want to get a job, there's your motivation. If you're trying to learn mathematics because you're taking a class in college, there's your motivation. Whatever it is, you need to find your motivation so that you can fall back on it when you encounter hurdles. The stronger your source of motivation, the more likely it is you will succeed. Perhaps you work at a job that you hate and you're trying to learn a new skill so you can get out of that toxic environment and have a new job where everything is better. In order to do that, you're going to have to learn some new skills and having that motivation to get out of whatever situation you're in and get into a better situation is a very, very strong source of motivation. The stronger your motivation, the more chance you will succeed at whatever it is you're trying to learn. Find your motivation. So those are the study habits of the top 1%. What do you think? Do you have other tips for people watching this video? If you do, please leave a comment. People read the comments, and when you leave constructive comments, it helps other people. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Good luck. Now go out there and learn.